that. Right. All right. Should we have start video? Uh, it is started. Oh. Yeah, it's recording. And this should be, we should start video. What we should do. There we go. Okay. 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 I call the Wednesday, August 9th, 2023 meeting of the Trees and Green Committee to order. And is Pat, has Pat joined us by video? Don't see her yet. Um, I see Judy Miller online. She was going to try to do that. I didn't see Pat registered, but Okay. And again, I haven't looked at my email. Uh, I know she's away, and um, but I'm just going to hope to join. Uh, we have the minutes from the July meeting. Any questions, observations, uh, changes? Okay, thank you. Actress. Tree removal requests. Um, Scott here. Are you here for a specific tree? Moral support. Uh, <laughs> uh, Five sixty Lincoln. Five sixty Lincoln. Yeah. And uh, there's a Judy Miller online. What, what, Judy, what tree are you here on? If, if other than just wanting to watch the meeting, maybe. <laughs> Judy, if you're, uh, Hello. yes, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> are you here for a specific uh, tree that you want to talk about? Well, I just wanted to know a little bit more about the the uh, removal of the um, the shrubs along Hanover Street near High Street. Um, and I also had a question about um, a dead tree on Hanover Street. It's um, closest to row 34 in the Port Walk garage. Um, and I'm wondering if the city is planning to replace that. Okay, let's, we're gonna take some of these things out of order and then take a lot of them together. Um, so let's do the Hanover Street um, shrubs and the tree that uh, Judy Miller was asking about. Um, I don't think that that tree wasn't posted for removal. So I'm not, uh, I'm not particularly sure what tree that is, but I can, after this meeting, go and inspect it and. If it is dead, we can just remove it. And if not, and it has to get approval, I'll bring it back and next month we'll discuss it. I'm not familiar with the shrubs though. So just to be aware, the ownership of the trees along Port Walk Place may be associated with the development and not the city. Um, if you recall, there was a number of trees replanted on Deer Street, uh, up at Deer and Port Walk Place. Uh, and those were planted by the developer or the property owner because they're part of their they were part of their site approval, so they're responsible for that. We do get involved uh, in, in advising and reviewing how they're doing it and what selection of, of tree they're doing. Um, so we will take a look at that, Judy, and see uh, if that is a city tree or whether that's uh, Port Walk Place's tree. Oh, and I, okay. Judy, I, 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 I did I did speak with Matt Albert. He uh, works for um the company related to port walk and he was not sure that <laughs> that port walk owned that tree so that's why i'm i'm just trying to clarify it because it's it's been it's been dead for a long time sure uh, I, and true to form for uh developers as well as cities uh we we both lead with the denial um <laughs> yeah and you have to have proof shown to us that we are responsible for it. Um, so we will, um, we will, we will look into that, Judy, and 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 try to bring it to a head. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and what was the address, sir? Uh, Five hundred and sixty Lincoln. Five hundred and sixty Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And that's one ash. As uh, uh, well, why don't we open the public hearing on that? And uh, Max, and then yeah. Um, so another ash in Portsmouth. Uh, I've seen confirmed exit holes on the tree. It's declining, and there is a basal uh, cavity uh, located right on the roadside of the tree. 
Okay, and sir, if you give your name, please. Patrick Clary, I uh, am the butter at 550 Lincoln. Come on up to the table. <laughs> over there. Yeah, that tree was actually already here before. Oh, was it? Yeah, okay, Mr. Clary. Patrick before. Clary, a butter at 550 Lincoln. I'm here to support whatever action needs to be uh, taken to make that tree safe. It looks like it's it's been uh, sick for a while. It seems like to me, falling branches, dead branches, and the, and the city has has trimmed it back. But uh, rather than having fall having it fall on the houses or the or my cars or your parked right underneath it, generally, uh, I'd prefer it to be removed if there's any safety issue at all. But I would also prefer it to be replaced by a, by a more mature tree than the last tree that was put in uh, when a tree was removed, uh, which took 20 years to to uh, shade anything, uh, to to cast any used, useful shade. Thank you very much. Um, any um, comments, <clears throat> Max, or any comments or questions from the board? Peter, we've addressed this tree in the past. Because uh, I remember that tree's wrapped around the utility pole and those guy wires from the utility pole to the tree and back and forth. And that was the, I know we addressed the tree at one time that it was going to be taken out. Um, I don't know where it got left. It was years ago. Uh, there was a different arborist. It was Bob before Bob Burner. So it's been years. Um, but I remember looking at this tree before. But that tree is guide to the utility company. So the utility is going to have to get involved in this. But you guys have already stubbed off the top of the pole. It's not, I mean, it's not your, you know, it's not Eversource's problem anymore. It's all the other utilities are still on that pole. Correct. And I, and I pointed generally the policy of the committee and the um, city arborist and the city is to replace any tree that is taken down. I don't think we have a guarantee of how quickly the, any of them will grow, but we always keep our fingers crossed when we do that. Uh, so, any, uh, do we have a motion to recommend removal of the uh, ash tree at um, 560 Lincoln Avenue. We'll make that Maybe one. Dennis, seconded by Joanna. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, <clears throat> we have a long list of trees. I don't see anybody else here for a public hearing. What um, Dick suggested, I thought it was a good suggestion, we just open up public hearing uh, on all of them and um, discuss them all at once. If anybody will use like the, I think the council has a consent agenda, which you can speak up on any particular thing that is on the agenda. So why don't we open up a discussion on all of the remaining tree removal requests besides 560 Lincoln Avenue? Any discussion? I uh, mean, Max is going to explain briefly and very well why he's recommending the removal of each tree. And if anybody has any questions, we can talk about it now. I really got one point of clarification on that. Uh, over by the senior center, you've got two aspens that are in there. Yeah. Um, so I didn't, know, I didn't know if they just weren't identified as aspen or you're just identifying the, um, to the far left, there's two standing dead aspen. That should come out at the same time the EAV are coming out. It could be a multi stem. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I um I was really only focused on all the declining and or dead ash. But yeah. Go ten feet to the left. To, like uh, toward the the structure. Towards the garage. Closer to the the garage to maintenance. It. I mean, yeah. you'll see it. They could okay. have just been misidentified as aspen, and you, you know, okay. you've got a dozen trees. Yeah. But there's two of them up in there that we found gotcha. out the other day. Uh, uh, the the concern was raised because that parking lot gets filled up with sure. all those dead trees. At least for this go around, obviously, I was primarily focused on just the parking lot. But if there are other dead trees nearby, we can just as right. easily go over and, and pop those they gotta, out. They got to tag the parking lot at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. I'll uh, make a note on that. Um, Any other comments? Well, um, I yeah. did want to the um, on Thornton Street, the two trees that were side by side. It looked to me that the one on the right looked worse than the one on the, the one that you had posted. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to know more about that choice of <laughs> that one. Um, at least as far as take them all. Yeah, I listed the three trees on there. Oh, there were oh, so it was one notice trees. for the for the three trees. Oh. Yeah. So all all of those are 
Oh. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Because <laughs> uh, I don't get out and actually read. The oh, you did. I just look at right. the sign. Yeah, there's um, a little way of maple beside there. If you want to take that dead limb out of there, it would be nice. Okay. Yeah, while we're while we're in the neighborhood, we can absolutely get that too. And we would it be? I know would it be difficult to maybe post each one because it might let neighbors understand, you know, that there's yeah. three trees involved, not I, um, something around. Yeah, or just make it yeah, more noticed. I, yeah, absolutely. Instead of getting kicked back again, I like figured I would. Oh, yeah, no, I I agree. Um, I my intent was to just use as little paper, paper, paper plastic as possible, so I can absolutely just get a. Um, I see kind of like however sure. source does they use the checkered uh, flagging yes. I can do something similar and okay and I'll make a general note any additional trees will be flagged with this kind of flag okay. I can do that be, it's a good visual for people because I think you see like, that naturally when like trees are being right yeah, absolutely it, kind of this is the point when Peter usually steps in and says well you know we're on a limited budget so <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no ribbons for you <laughs> I I concur that they're if it's we're not explicit uh, with our plans, uh, people will come back and say you didn't post that. And you, right. Correct. We we posted one that said we were going to cut the three down. Mm -hmm. That's right. We didn't post it, so you are correct. Okay. All right. So I think we should be posting cool. each tree we're removing. Absolutely. I think I'm pretty typical of the person that pays that much attention. Maybe not <laughs> Perfect. So much, you know? don't even get out of your car. <laughs> <laughs> Was that flagging? Drive by. Having the, like a drive by. Yeah. That's right. Just put the papers on. Um, okay. So. With these these ones that the ash that you have put on this agenda, are these just the the, the lowest hanging fruit, the the, the ones that because I think that we had decided that we were, you know, it was going to they were going to be cut as need be, as they had deteriorated to be a problem yeah. and, a, and a safety issue for the city. So when I first saw this, I was, you know, I I shot you an email. I was like, oh my gosh, here we're gonna go and just right. know, but as I pulled up to every tree and got out and examined a few these are low hanging fruit. I mean, it's this becoming, is, yeah, and it's, it is becoming more and more apparent as time goes on, uh -huh. which trees they're, they're are in dying dire overnight. Need. They're dying yeah. overnight. Yeah, literally. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and to, to kind of bring it to home for you, that ash that's nearby your house, it, it looks still generally okay. It's certainly showing those classic signs, but at least as far as how, like, to keep myself sane, going by the ones that look the worst right. to just, and also keep this relatively short. You know, it's already a full page of removals, but um, you know, if we started addressing every single one, we'd be here for uh, two hours yeah. just going over every single ash, and then we'd um, just be completely inundated with removals on our board. And so this is this is my like kind of structuring it out. And, and that's what I was insanity, asking. What you know, what is the procedure to doing it? Because just coming in and just taking all the ash right now. Uh, I mean, it would be a bit affronting for the city. I know it's there's the band aid approach that Scott likes to do sometimes. Yeah. But then there's the other approach that might be just a little softer for citizens as we really talk about it. As there's it some, becomes a public safety concern, I yes. think if it if it's a little bit of both right now, like sure we're going to band aid off, you know, five or six trees that are nearby each other. They're all declining at a similar rate. Mm -hmm. Or if if there's a way to um, address them as they become more of that that risk, and I think that's how I feel comfortable with Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Uh, Judy Miller has her hand up. Judy, oh, sorry, I um I just wanted to know about the the shrubs along Hanover Street, but I think I'm out of order, so I apologize. Judy, are you? It uh, was there a uh, removal notice on? About the use, yeah. So is it is it the um, those U shrubs, those U trees that are tagged right next to the Hanover parking garage structure? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So we can address that really quick um, if if we're um, so, so yeah. So some of these trees, uh, these U's have declined. Um, some look a little bit better than others, but it was also requested to me that we remove these trees um, for the Hanover um project that's currently going on right now and that was done a couple of meetings ago right? so we had removed two cherry trees operating under the the notion that that was all we needed to do we would get by with just pruning all of the other trees and they could all remain um they did come back 
whatever for whatever reason that they were still unable to do the work with these trees present. Um, some of them are in better shape than others. I I will um, I will say that, but there are at least one or two that are not not really in as good a condition. So Judy, we we'll be planning on replanting after the construction project is done, um, and and addressing the the edge of the garage there. So if that was part of your concern, yes. Thank you very much. And I, I suspect maybe it's only me, but it seems like we, on Islington between Bartlett and Spinney, um, a number of dead trees you go by. I assume they're all ash trees and mostly ash trees, which I think is going to be much more commonplace for us to see. And um, um, and Scott, we mentioned about Scott uh, Richardson, who was here as a guest today, um, using a Band-Aid approach. And, and, <laughs> but we, are, we often ask him to use the Band-Aid approach. Uh, Rip it off. <laughs> if at all. So we appreciate that. And, and Scott is here. And we also have another guest. Um, AJ has brought with a guest who's attending. Uh, Emily is uh, an intern with Crop Extension. Uh, she's shadowing us for this week, uh, trying to get us some urban, urban forestry experience. Uh, City of Portsmouth obviously handles trees different than most, so she's uh, attending college out at ESF, but we won't hold that against her. She at least lives here in New Hampshire in, in Hudson, uh, so we've been around to Nashua, and we're going to go do some drone work tomorrow and sort trees at a nursery and everything else. Welcome, Emily. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks for pursuing this. All right. It might be interesting for us some uh, month to have a video of your average day, AJ. <laughs> we, we get around sometimes. Imagine there is no average day. That, Peter. <laughs> is there um, any other discussion on any of the trees? You're doing it? Go ahead. I have a question. Do we have we set or started like a replanting um, project or like have we obviously I assume you thought about that, but as we are going to be removing so many. So for next season, or is yeah. our plan to, I yeah. we've oh, yeah. a lot this year, but right. we normally plant roughly like a hundred, but is our plan to yeah. up more next year? Yeah, absolutely. So traditionally um, for every planting season, and I've, I've been here, we do hundred trees last year or this, this past spring was the exception where we did 200. Um, but we've had some really strong momentum and we're, we're hoping to do 150 and have that be the new standard. So we're watering and maintaining 300 trees. Um, so watering, mulching, weeding. Over a two-year period. Over yeah. a two-year period. So that's <laughs> forever, yes. That is like the, yeah, I think it's it's doable. We have the funds for it. Um, we have the staffing for it. So it's, yes. So just, just to clarify, we did a total of 400 trees this year, yes. 200 being donated. So 400 in the 400th. Uh, and, and Max is correct. Typically we do 100. Uh, city planted trees he's convinced me to go for 150 um we have uh you know that we have the ability to do it because we've taken on some of the plant well we've taken on the planting in-house and the approach to which we're doing the bare root planting um, has given us you know more success um so we're we're more confident um in the past we used to contract out uh the plantings and so we were able to do a lot less uh, but now we're able to, because we brought it in-house, uh, we're able to do more and they're um, paying attention to it more so we have a higher survival rate. So that's yeah. that's a really good thing. And we just got our brochure from Schichtel's uh, within the last week. So that's what I was going to yeah. ask that, yeah. you know, so out of the 150, usually what what different types of trees do you try? I know we don't do monocultures or anything like that, of course, but. Yeah, I think this past uh, just we. In my mind, I, I break it into two categories. It's small and large trees. So trees that will work well in more confined spaces or under power lines, small. So 25 to 30 feet tall at maturity. And then beyond that, there's like a sort of gray, medium-sized tree uh -huh. um, classification, I guess. But as far as how I break it down, it's small and large. And then I tried to do an even split, 100 and 100 um this past spring and that so and just to, just yeah. to, we still have a, a item on on the docket that we're talking about which is oh, the sure. tree removal requests yes why do i would suggest we talk about this once we're done with that and then just to be aware you know uh, max will come back to the committee with a suggested list of trees so just to 
circle back to what we were That's initially talking fault. about. Dennis, okay. yeah, uh, the South Mill playground tree. The, yeah, I wanted to talk tree. about that. Too. I want to hear what people mm -hmm. think about that one. So a little bit of, uh, I mean, the history with this tree for us is that uh, in spring of 2020, a large leader had torn out, causing the wound that you see, and it's just slowly over time started, um, you know, breaking away at all that heartwood that's in there. Uh, we have gone through so this past so. Uh, recently, we removed a very large branch that was hanging over the over the uh, playground, uh, it, with the notion that you know alleviating some of that weight might limit the potential for it to want to go that way in the event that the tree does um, happen to let go. So that's that's the brief history on the tree. So to Mr. Chairman, for me uh, to add to the story a little bit. The city is planning on replacing the playground with a universally accessible uh, structures and in kind of reconfiguring the whole playground. We're putting together an RFP for that right now. Um, and the removal of that tree would give a little bit more space uh, for that potential uh, reconfiguration of the playground and obviously uh, planting trees and having natural um, elements to the playground as part of you know, all of our playground design now. Um, but I, you know, from a safety standpoint, I, I'm not comfortable leaving that tree. I don't know what's holding it up. Yeah. And Dennis, <clears throat> Joe. Yeah, I, um, you know, I wonder how much sound wood is left in that tree around the base of it, around the stem of it to keep it up. And the thing that really bothers me is there's no higher um, target value than having little kids playing in the playground and something falling on top of them. So, that's what really concerns me. So I can't even remember the formula for how much sound would you need. So many there's areas. an opening. Yeah, basically, you know, what you're looking at, you know, is diameter of the tree factors in a species, but diameter of the species, as soon as it's open, you're looking at having four to six inches of sound wood on a tree of that diameter. Um, and in some areas you don't have it. Uh, you know, the more obviously the more sound wood they have, you know, the better. The big advantage of that tree, it's an oak, you know, oak tough. That's got that white oak right next to it that's given it some support. I think that you know the white oak is you know taking some of the some some of the brunt. You can see some of the damage in that part. Um, you'll be surprised how strong that tree is. So uh, even though it looks the the perception of the tree is worse than worse yeah. than really how how bad it is. Yeah. When we took that big tree down in the corner, you know, corner of the park, I mean you could climb inside the bottom of that oak tree, the one that was right out here. I still have the butt at my piece because we couldn't do anything with it. The upper portion of the tree was all milled out, and it ended up in the police department as a coffee table in there. Um, but you know, it was a massive tree, but a massive tree had you know that circumference is big on that tree. Um, but those are all just predictors, you know, based on Forest Service work over the years, that kind of stuff. Hollow trees are still really, really rugged because right. um, the inside of a tree is you know isn't doing that much. It's that outside wood. Yeah. Someone's living inside it. Yeah. The concern with this, like Max, Max had talked about, is there's not a lot of regrowth, there's not a lot of response from that tree. It's hanging out. It's an old tree. Um, so you, there's a little bit of reaction wood growing down one side of it. It's never going to seal up. It's never going to cover that wound. It can't get any better. Um, if it was out in the middle of the park, we talked about it. I mean, I'd leave it. Um, it's not in the middle of a park. It's not in the middle of a wood lot. You know, right next to the playground. And that's the worst thing with, you know, the location for that tree. And the seat, you know, the wait period, a couple, three, you know, tried it out, see what's going on. You know, it wasn't going to come down immediately. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, I would agree with Peter. I wouldn't leave it. Especially if there's going to be more construction damage. That Any, it's just going to make yeah, it worse. Yeah, yeah. Any other comments, questions on the list of requests to remove? If I could just speak really quickly. Uh, I didn't get a chance to look at the trees that are on this list. But uh, right now, Eversource is feeling a very healthy budget for tree removal. So I don't know if Max, if any of these other than the one on Lincoln Ave, and I think there's yeah. another one up on Woodbury, I saw. If you guys aren't comfortable doing those, Eversource would put them on their radar and okay. take care of them for the city. Definitely that 560 Lincoln Ave. Yeah, tree. I've, I've definitely. Mentioned, <laughs> mentioned some uh, Eversource folks to go down and take a look at that cool. and see what's going to happen before awesome. that turns into a nightmare. Okay. Yeah, thank you all. Um, thank you, Scott. I'll keep that That's in mind. Thank you very much. Did you take down that big tree on Woodbury Ave a month ago? On oh, Woodbury Ave. Yeah. Opposite Boyd Road. That massive, massive. That come, 
out of the developer. Was not the developer that did that one? I'm drawing a blank. Sorry, hold on. That's what near the new development. It's across the street from that proposed development. Oh, across the street. I just wondered whether you have the resources. That was a massive tree. Hmm. Any final or further discussions on the? Do we have a motion to recommend removal of all of the trees on this list today? Made by Dennis. Second. Second by Mike. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. His new nickname is Max the Axe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, on the record that's now. replanting. <laughs> yes. Oh. Max the Axe. That's right. Perfect. Up, update on the planting uh, for the, and the trees planted as part of the 400th. Um, I'm not much of an update. Uh, as as we sort of touched on before, though, uh, planting season is already in sight. Got the brochure, looking at species now. I have the bare root availability Excel spreadsheet. So kind of going through picking realistic trees uh, that we will likely be able to to receive, and then yeah, just really going going through it and. It's a bit of a process, but yeah, better to start now than uh -huh. in January. What What's the window of selection that we're looking at in terms of timing? You know, it's because uh, hmm. they get the bare root get snapped up pretty quick. Uh -huh. yes. I, so the more uncommon species, those are, there's maybe, uh, I saw some s sort of smaller growth habit maples that would do really well under power lines. They only had like 10 of those. Yeah. So the the tried and true, the trees that we planted quite a few of this past spring, they will have an abundance of. Um, so that's, and I remember selecting all those trees or trying to anyway, get it in front of, um, get my order in front of Schichtel's, but that was like the end of November. So if I do it sooner. <laughs> so I, yeah. I, I put a motion, Mr. Chairman. I would I would say the 50 new trees that Max is planning on doing give him the authority to select whatever tree he thinks is interesting and and then the 150 balance will come back with the more traditional trees that have less restriction in terms of availability. I would hate to miss the opportunity to do something interesting uh, because we took time to do we have a second for that motion? I definitely second, second Any that discussion. All in favor. Cool. Uh, <laughs> that's what I want cool trees. I want Sweet. interesting trees. I don't want to see a bunch of the same old normal trees because we live in a special place. So those old and I want to see specimens. Any value. None. <laughs> but, well, yeah, but you know, you know what I mean. I'll adjust that title of item number three to update on tree planting for the city's 401st. <laughs> <laughs> 401. 401. <laughs> Counting. Okay, Michael Griffin has agreed to his uh, discussion something that a top, couple topics that he's quite expert on. Well, um, and um, that is um, the South Cemetery, and, and uh, I don't know if he's going to chance to talk about his history, which Dick is an expert on. But Michael's to... efforts uh, at tree planting um, when you look at just look over the last. How many years have you been those, doing this? On that website. Since 2013. Yeah. yeah. 2013. 2013. Mike, if you're uh, you're willing, we could scan these and put them on the city's website, the uh, street committee portion. And just, you know, so the general public can get a chance to see. Some of those pictures are interesting. Michael, is this the list that you used for my garden club when we came to visit? Uh, or have you even those, perfected those it more? Here as well. Uh-huh. It's a great tour. So the South Cemetery, which borders Sagamore Avenue and South Street, is actually comprised of five separate cemeteries that all interconnect. The Cotton and Elmwood Cemetery is a city property. The Cotton Cemetery is the oldest section in that cemetery. Elmwood is a small subdivision of it further down on the property. The proprietor's section of the cemetery, if you're familiar with it, which would include the pond is owned by the Unitarian Universalist Church or the South Church in Portsmouth. And the Harmony Grove and Sagamore sections are owned by, privately owned, I'll leave it at that. Dick, I believe MJ Griffin purchased those sections in 1885. Thereabouts. <laughs> so, a doctor named Cheever. Yes. 
So the Sagamore and Harmony Grove sections were purchased by the Griffin family in the 1880s. Of an interesting note, the Society for Perpetual Care. This is a, a fund management that maintains the cemetery in terms of roadways and grass and cutting and trees and to a certain effect. That was incorporated in 1897. It's managed by five trustees. They're not compensated for their work. And Teddy Connors was the president most recently of that group. Mm -hmm. So I would hope Kevin McLeod would, would probably assume that role. Don Hayes is also on that committee. So they meet throughout the year and appropriate funds to maintain the cemetery. I studied wildlife management at UNH. And Dick Weilich and Arthur Bora really initiated and confirmed my interest in wildlife. Um, dendrology is the study of trees, ornithology is the study of birds. So it's given me a wonderful opportunity in this phase of my life of incorporating birds and trees in that cemetery, which I consider to be a garden. My resources for trees and tree plantings, aside from Dick's input, would be visits frequently to the Arnold Arboretum, the Mount Auburn Cemetery, the Lowell Cemetery, and Crown Hill Cemetery, which is Indianapolis, and then a new one I found, Cedar Park, which is in Hudson, New York. So I, I observe their trees, their plantings, selection of trees is, is really what I use them as a resource. So when I first started this project, if you will call it that, my initial thought was to provide trees that are good for the bees. And by doing so, there is a list there of these flowering trees to extend them throughout the season as long as you could, starting I think with the, the horse chestnut tree and ending with the seven sun. So you've got flowering trees in the cemetery for probably four and a half, five months. My mother maintains a, a beehive on her property and the person that manages it for her says, or has commented in the past that the quality of her honey is the best of any beehive in the state. So whether these bees are taking full advantage of those trees down in the cemetery, there's linden trees near our property, which also is a big source for them. So the, the list now of current activity, again, I broke it down between the proprietor section. I meet with John Shagnon, who's a trustee of that group, as well as uh, Nicholas Ashleman. Those are the trees that went in. And interestingly enough, I selected a Dawn Redwood at our handout. And a person on Wakabongo Road who also grabbed a Dawn Redwood didn't feel the tree was suitable for her property. So she gifted that tree to me. And I put that in the ground down by the pond with the sugar maples, an American chestnut. And of course we lost my mother's chestnut, which I can't believe how quickly it was leafed out and dead within a month. Yeah, oh. amazing. And, and that log or tree is now out at the Urban Forest Center. I don't know what we're gonna do with it. But... More than something. Yeah, yeah. So, so some of those pictures illustrate really what that cemetery looked like 100 and 150 years ago with the number of trees that are, that are visible on it. So I, it, unlike your restrictions with power lines, I could put any type of tree in that cemetery and it, it will thrive. And it amazes me this year, the growth of the trees in that cemetery. I mean, oh. probably double and triple what you would normally anticipate for growth. I've only lost a few trees over that period of time. So the, as the pictures show what Peter started in 1996, yeah, planting along the wall up on South Street. And I went back yesterday, you in total put 30 trees in that cemetery over that period really? of time. Who knows that many? And it amazes me how quickly the Norway maples grow. So I'm gonna to have to do some trimming this winter or late fall. Some of those branches are now extending over the road. Thank you. So I'll climb that tree and snip them out of there. 
my sister lives on Waka Bungalow Road. So it gives me the opportunity now that I'm on a fixed income and not going on going up to Chichester and spending three or four hundred dollars for a tree. <laughs> Starting out with small trees and, and, and working with them to get them up to a, a size to be able to put them into the cemetery. I do want to emphasize going forward elm trees and hopefully I'm picking some good hybrids. Yeah. That was a dominant tree in Portsmouth, obviously, Richards Avenue in, into the cemetery. So I'll, I'll purposefully try to get two or three of those in every year. So in total, I, between Peter and myself over this period of 20 years, we put probably 80 new trees in that cemetery. Deb's garden club was kind enough to gift us with some identification markers for some of the unique trees. And I think that's something I'll continue to do. Because people have commented on- We some continue of the to work with you on that too. Okay. That's one of our focuses. Yeah. Thank you. Some of the trees that, that I'm really impressed with. My yellow wood just flowered for the first time this past year. And where is that one located? In the middle section of the cemetery near where George Ward's buried. Okay. For people that might know that. Um, I put a little bee hive with it. The Tupelo, which was given to me by Beth and Rick Simpson, oh. was that big around and they were ready to throw it out. And you helped me get the leaders going. <laughs> it's massive. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. Um, so no, this is this is my hobby, my passion, my garden. In addition to the trees. Larry Day is a friend of mine who manages and maintains the birdhouses at the Portsmouth Country Club. And he took it upon himself to see that they were maintained, surveyed, cleaned. And in doing so at the Portsmouth Country Club, there's 50 birdhouses located throughout the property with a primary emphasis on insect reduction. So the less spraying for insects, mm -hmm. the tree swallows and the bluebirds pretty much keep the insects down. The tree swallows eat the mosquitoes, the bluebirds eat ground insects, and he's also introduced purple martins, which eat the greenheads. Wow. It's, ama it's amazing. If you, if you, yeah, you carry a can of off in your golf bag, but you only use it on very rare occasions. It's impressive in terms of that. So I took it upon myself, knowing that there were a few bluebirds down in the cemetery of offering them good nesting habitat and bird houses and Dick's made a couple of them for me. I've purchased several myself. I maintain about, well, 10 houses that I maintain. I survey them, um, obviously maintain them, do my best to keep the English sparrows out, which I'll only remove their nests if there are, if the nest has been constructed and there's eggs in it. If they've got ahead of me and have, you know, live birds in there, I will not disturb the nest. But of, of the trees that I, the birdhouses I maintain, if I put it near, put them near hydrangeas, which is a, a, a shrub, I don't think it's a tree. They do it, make tree points. Do they? It, it gives, it seems like it gives them a comfort level of protection. And I guess when the baby birds come out initially, they have some place to perch. Those are the houses that are most successful. And most of those will produce two clutches of birds. So as they get out into the, into you can distinguish the young ones from the adults. I'm figuring those houses produce about 20 new birds a year, which where they go and how they disperse, I don't know, but Dick's got them down on his back porch throughout the year. So I assume they come out of the cemetery and uh, it's That's great. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. So I thought I'd share some of that history and information with everyone and the goal was for 100 trees. And I think between you and I, we're close to 100 already. I just need to sneak them in strategically. And, and uh, because my brother, of course, maintains the cemetery. He doesn't like to rake leaves. <laughs> so there's a little conflict within the family. But, uh, I'll keep, keep at it and, and uh, do my best. I hope my little chestnut makes it. Mm, yeah. That's great. Well, thank you. You yep. do a fabulous yeah, job. You it's do. a beautiful place. Yeah. Do you have problems with roots um, and headstones affecting them? No. Mm. 
there's a number of reasons as to what topples those headstones over a period of time, you know, ground decay, old, old graves. I don't know when did they start using concrete vaults, probably in the 60s. Yeah. Prior to that, you were buried in a casket in a pine box. Uh -huh. And as that deteriorates, a lot of those headstones will topple over, but not so much the oh. roots. Hmm. You know? you know, I, I think we've been very fortunate as a city to have the Griffin family's interest over the years, but now uh, with Mike, um, uh, retiring retiring and, and taking it uh, it's uh, it's it's what a gift to the city and uh and I, one of the things that i am take a great comfort level in is some things like the hat attack or the tamarack that i i fear in many other places will get cut down every winter because oh it's got no foliage on it it must be dead mm -hmm. and um uh those needles fell so it's, and and when someone like mike is around you know that People are going to be educated. No, no, this is, this is, this isn't dead. It's uh, and and the Dawn Redwood, all these trees. That, um, as someone that knows that stuff like Mike is is so valuable. Hmm. I second that. Do you have catalpa? I've uh, never seen a tree with a more rapid growth rate than a northern catalpa. Yeah, really. Do you have catalpa in there? The one across from Walter Long's house on Sagamore Avenue. And when they restored the wall, oh, what, two years ago, three years ago, they did some root damage to that and the hackberry. And I, I kind of gave them both up for dead. I'd be willing to bet that that catalpa tree has grown six to seven feet vertically this year alone. Wow. And it's a messy tree. That's what I was going to say. Tree. It's a messy tree. It drops, what, four times? No, it's just got those cacao pods. Well, then the leaves, and then it has, you know, yeah, the like flowers, like and then it has, you know, on the same day, generally. Yeah. yeah. The hackberry's doing, huh. doing great. I've got another little baby one going. Well, thank you, Michael. Mike, thank great. you very, very much. Thank Wonderful. Did, did those pictures make it around? Yeah, yeah they're right here. Yeah. Are you interested in getting these posted on the... Uh, sure. We can put them on the... Uh, these copies, can we... So we're just going to get them back. Yeah. Okay. That's why you uh, put you yeah. in charge. We get them scanned and then we'll put it under the title of South Cemetery. Do, no. do we have any old business? Uh, uh, what about uh, badges for members of the committee that don't have? Yeah, I, I looked into the badges. I mentioned to the city manager um, that we would be looking to get you guys badges and it was not objected to. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> but it was in front. <laughs> it wasn't cast. Well, it, it, you know, where do we stop? I mean, each committee gets, I mean, my explanation was that you guys are forward facing. You do go out to the, into the neighborhoods. And so if people yeah. see you walking around, it gives you some level of cover, comfort. Yeah. It would give me some comfort. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Um, I just wanted to follow up when when will the signage that uh, has been so you know done so well, when will that go on those sure. trees? Yeah. Uh, it, I haven't been able to actually produce anything mm -hmm. yet. Um, I've been working with Jeff, our signs guy. Um, and it just so my apologies that that did bring up um it conjured I had another thought of um related to that <laughs> is that um i don't know if this committee in the past has done any kind of canvassing or whatever that is but i don't know if there's been something quite like eab in recent history that's prompted you know more more action or more interaction with residents but even just driving on islington street and seeing all the dead ash trees between people's houses and they're probably rental property so they you know, I'm whatever the case is, but even just knocking on doors and leaving a pamphlet or something, I don't, I had the thought that would be more of a direct um, way of getting that information out to residents. Uh, still, of course, wanting to do those signs and putting them up in places where many people can see them, like out front of City Hall, Market oh. Square, um, the Recycling Center down back at Public Works. Um, but in addition to that, once that gets off the ground, I, I do think it might be appropriate to hand out some documentation that looks official, maybe um, with a 
something from the chair, have it look as official as possible, and just with what would the intent be? Just to educate, and so this. My thinking would be we have identified a diseased or dead ash tree on your property. We are just leaving this notice to inform you of of that and okay. so something along those lines, I yeah. suppose. Do we um I know obviously we put it in the newsletter and things, but do we want to have an if this group wants, either I can or chair or any person can uh do an update at a council meeting to you know try to again get ahead of the curve when we are going to be removing essentially what's going to be a massive amount of trees to the average uh -huh. to the average resident over the next year year and a half right. if it even takes that long before they all have to go uh so i don't know if that's something that if this if this committee wants i'm more than happy to put it on the agenda and we can figure out yeah i would ask i would you know go through the city manager obviously yes and um if the committee yeah. so asks you know that's fine you know peter would have a better handle on the figures but my guess is that it's only been in the last 10 years that we've had on an annual basis added more trees than we lost or had removed for different reasons. I think that record may be in jeopardy now uh, for the next. But thanks to the 400. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We, might, we might be dead. Either. And those are the kinds of figures that need to get out. If you know that, if we know those figures, but people don't know those figures, they don't count really. I feel like you people know. are constantly saying there's yeah. the city's always cutting down trees. trees and yeah. putting small trees up, you know, that little that sweet spot of the three inch diameter that's mm -hmm. so good. But this gentleman on Lincoln right. may not be so happy with right. the tree that he gets right. initially. Um, so I think it is always good to be as transparent. And, yeah. Uh, Do residents reach out to you knowing a replacement is going to occur for input? You know, I'd like one of these, or can you get that one? It's it's less, it's less. So maybe out of the two hundred that we planned for this past spring, there were maybe a dozen or so. So it's very infrequent. I think with the those requests have come even greater now that the Panway Manor replanting is coming up next spring. There there have been more individuals out of that one neighborhood requesting uh -huh. a specific, you know, either a very specific crab apple variety that I know we won't be able to get, but uh you know i'll try to accommodate and okay. see if we can find it somehow else but uh -huh. yeah oftentimes it's a lot of those requests these days are from panaway okay because i know chuck was really that was something he brought it to the table he would do that yeah and, and we and, and it would be more about these are the trees that we like so if it was a week or two before whatever the case is if it's an even longer period uh, that I'm aware of a person wanting a specific tree, we okay. can certainly try to accommodate it as best we can then. But if it's a person who approaches the week that I put that little green notice flag down and they say, oh, like, do you have uh -huh. this tree? And it's like, no, but these are all the trees that we do have. I think Please just having free. that choice is makes so, people yeah. feel good. So just to, for understanding's sake, we we do our best to accommodate folks. We This is not an a la carte menu for <laughs> each resident to be able to dictate to max what his day is going to be like mm -hmm. sure we have you know the entire city that we manage mm -hmm. and we do the best we can to accommodate but it is not a situation where we're gonna you know please everybody check sure. so and we have not planted trees when people ask you know if they said i don't want a tree i don't want mm -hmm. that tree here you know don't plant it we have not planted as well um but it's a there's limits to 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 what we do it's always nice to hear peter's message in that <laughs> so i think currently I it's, it it's going like well it. <laughs> i think currently it is going well i think it's interactive about things and just sometimes it's just like, here are three trees that would work pick one right and, and that's usually feel yeah. great about that so. and just to, just for clarification's sake um the the choice for residents is actually all the way back to todd um Croto uh who you may recall was our general form at one time who that was here uh, mm -hmm. the committee so that is something we have tried to do over the last you know really last 15 years probably yeah Matt, um Chuck Chuck thank you <laughs> I excelled at it any other new or old business well I would say in historical perspective of this outbreak of this ash which is probably in, in 
in two years, it won't be any, basically. You're looking at probably three to five because some of your trees, some of your ash trees are still in pretty good shape. Yeah. Um, so it, it takes a while longer for the insects to, you know, to get into that. Situation. Dick and I both grew up on Richards Avenue. <clears throat> Picture in your mind the entire length of that road right. with American elm trees 20 feet on center. And within a period of what, 10 years, they were all gone. Oh, God. That's wild. It's heartbreaking. I know. Yeah. Along with the yellow brick road, literal yellow brick road. That's right. You know, the entire length of it. Mm. I was lamenting to Deb before the meeting today about the volume of ash wood that we're going to be losing soon. And she had a great idea of asking about other communities and whether what they do with their ash that they're taking down. Is there any programs to uh, provide like firewood for people that are really in need of warmth during the winter. Do you know of any communities? Yep. Um, so there are, there's a couple here in the city. Uh, there's a Angie Angels who used to be, he wasn't the city arborist, but he, Chris uh, Bellevue. Yeah. Yeah. He works down at the um, uh, Prescott Park. So we provided wood. He, he was a, Assistant to the previous city office before Corin, before you know, before this whole committee existed, he collected you know wood down there. So I gave him a bunch of wood when I was doing work in the city. We so he is somehow connected with an organization that finds that can reach out to towns and find people to get that wood to the right people. Uh, city of Dover um, works with a bunch of local arborists that kind of stuff at the county farm. So they actually have uh, can't say inmates so they're, you know get guests of the county facility uh, I actually go out and cut and split the wood and stack it and process it and then through the social services groups in Dover that wood is given out to to res, you know residents in need so there's a bunch of little so they call them wood banks there's a bunch of little organizations that exist like that uh, so local arborists I like you know in Dover I connected a bunch of local arborists with that group just a way to you know go in there and drop off wood um, so uh, the gentleman you know that is down on this be down off at 33 or somewhere. I feel what Chris's place was. Um, but local libraries could, you know, just drop off wood and stuff like that. So I got our whole group together one day. Uh, and we went down and processed, you know, a couple of cords of wood with it um, that we had for some tree work. So could we do something in our community and use the Urban Forestry the, Center as a the problem with the ash is that it can't go anywhere. So, right. you know. There's no quarantine still in place and everything else that's a free for all, but we don't want this wood to end up to somebody in Maine. They've already got EAB over there, but it, the, the movement of the ash, uh, it, you know, is would we'd really have to contain it. So, you know, Portsmouth, Rye, all known communities, just as a best management practice, mm -hmm. even though the state and the feds, you know, have sort of given up on their quarantine. Um, it is possible to do that. The, the flip side of that is a risk and the liability. So how do you handle the wood? How do you, you know, how do you split, you know, all, there's all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so in Dover, again, the inmates are doing all that as, you know, as part of their yes. program. Um, the uh, the state actually has it at the, you know, at the state level, uh, they process firewood. Uh, the, the, you know, the felons at the state prison uh, process firewood and that's actually sold back to most of our campgrounds. Uh, so our agency to combat the EAB issues and everything else, our agency bought them a wood kiln. Oh. Um, so the fire was pro cut, processed, kiln dried, not necessarily to dry the wood, but to you know get it to the federal temperatures. Basically, it cooked the wood, so the inside temperature is 160 or 70 or whatever. Right, uh, and it kills off most of insect larvae. So then that firewood can really be distributed oh. all over the state. We did that when EAB first came to town um, because they had hundreds of cords of firewood that couldn't leave the city of Concord because EAB was first detected in Concord. So there are these little wood banks all over the place. We've tried to repurpose some ash from communities around the state, but working with Kyle and that kind of stuff. The problem is the ash wood itself, something's with the insect, and I was going to bug you about this to figure out what the issue is, but something with the way the insect feeds on the tree, it chemically changes the wood structure, and the wood is no longer usable as a wood product for traditional products that you do for ash. But how about firewood? Particularly bending. Firewood is perfect. It's great firewood. Uh -huh. Um, but a higher value use of that is, you know, flooring, tables, benches, whatever else. Yeah. It can't be bent. Huh. Um, a friend of mine has thousands of board feet of clear ash uh, that are now useless uh, because he uh, steam bends the ash uh, and he cannot bend it. Hmm. Um, it. It doesn't hold the properties. That's why ash gets very weak. 
uh, you know, that dead stand in oak, you know, dead stand in pine. We've all seen pines on the side of the road. Doesn't scare me. Uh, ash is half dead. Scare me because they just snap. Big, huge chunks of them just come out of those trees. I, I don't know what's causing that. Um, <clears throat> so fire was the perfect product for it. Uh, we could be a staging area for it. People could pick it up. We'd have to work with our legal and city legal and that kind of stuff as, you know, as far as how to process that. Um, not every homeowner, I mean, I can't have homeowners just showing up with a car and a chainsaw and a couple of buddies on a Saturday. <laughs> um, I, the best for us would be as if, you know, we or some entity processed that wood uh, because, you know, no chainsaws, you know, all that kind of, you know, homeowner with a car could just come get the wood and, and go. Um, we have a splitter at our place. Our guys process 40 or 50 cords of wood a year for our boiler. Um, so it, we have the mechanisms and, and stuff to be able to do that. I don't have a lot of time to be doing it, but I'm sure I could convince them to do a few cords. Uh, but if there was an entity to to do that kind of stuff, you know, we could look at doing something like that in my place. Okay. Is there any financial relief available at any level? Uh, not anymore. Uh, there was grant programs going around. We we bought some insect, you know, treatment tools and that kind of stuff. There's injection guns that communities could treat their trees with, uh, but they had to have somebody, you know, on staff to be able to use those tools that's already licensed. Our staff went around. We did treat a bunch of trees in Portsmouth. So there are a few ash tree banks, I guess. Uh, the goal now is all the ash trees, let them die, let them go away, save a pile of ash trees for after the wave of the insects is gone. So Kyle treated a bunch of trees out off of 33. There's a pond over there, the there's a woodlot Chuck took them to. Oh, um, is that off of Harvard and uh, Greenland Road? The north north side of 33 somewhere up in there okay i yep. didn't go into that i i'd hook our entomologist folks up with chuck uh and cora and they they found a few different stands of ash trees and went around and treated those trees so the idea is that that seed bank of you know new to small ash trees will be there after the wave has gone through we don't know if it's going to work but that's what they're trying if there's no other new or yep. old business uh i would Entertain a motion to adjourn. One more quick thing. Uh, there was some interest in doing another tree giveaway type yeah. thing at my place, small one. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people liked it because I got free trees, that kind of stuff. I don't know if there's a mechanism in place for that, but if there is, um, you know, we're just going to get those wheels turning because we selected the trees initially, you know, in September. Right. Uh, and then, you know, sort of went through their process and that kind of stuff. So think about that. You know, if we wanted to do something like that again at our place, uh, we're in it for if we can help out with that. Um, I don't know if we go on that big a scale again. I don't know if there's a fu funding mechanism for it. Uh, where Rolling Greens has been sold, the logistics of making all this happen would be you know different. Um, I'm sure we could still work with Rick and Beth, but it you know wouldn't be as easy as it was in the past. Um, I'd need to know what the dollar value is. What I can't remember what the we ended up spending uh, between. The materials and trees and so you know we have some monies right now yep. uh, ultimately you know the monies that we spend on that would take away from city plantings because yep. you know, it comes from the same pool of money sure. uh, but if you know it's a benefit to the residents one way or the other then you know obviously we want to do that and you know we're comfortable right now with our how much money we have uh, for a couple of years uh, in terms of planting so we we could probably do it so but I, I just need to get a number together and then present it to the city manager you could, you know, uh, and we could scale it back a little bit i mean i know yeah. some of those trees were pay, paid for potentially by some private groups pay, the road the road 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 road. Road. yeah um so maybe we do a you know sort of a little different scale on that mm -hmm. Dick has made a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Dennis second. seconded. All in favor. AJ, I've got aye. um. Aye. Aye. If you get a second, yes. Yeah. So I've got uh, Eric Evie out. Uh, he wants to just talk about the. Uh, Michael, I'll get Thank these uh, right. 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 back to you post haste. Okay. okay. I'll have the uh, Stephanie Secord scan them up. <laughs> post them to the post them to the website. I'll come and get them. Awesome. Thank, Thank you very much. When are you going to take those trees out? On the um, Cotton Cemetery, the bus plows field. Thank you for coming and speaking at our Cotton oh, Cemetery. Cross Street? South Street. South Street. Um, I'm going to do as a quote cool gift. Huh? Oh.
When, I thought uh, you were going to take all that dead stuff out of there. When they, when they say. Oh, right. Yes. And the, yes. Um, we've been waiting for the ground to dry out. <laughs> that's kind of that's the fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the fun part. It's like we, Corin had mentioned it like springtime. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like when it dries out, you know, middle of summer. And here we are, middle of summer. And it's, so it raised three five, inches yesterday. Five, no, it's it's on the radar. Thank you. Hey, my yes, sir. Are you still resolute? Uh, she has not yet. I, I, I didn't know. We just got her for a week. She's been working with Kyle and uh, Bill, so I don't know what. Not sure. The last we spoke, he was very yeah. anti. I left us yesterday. This is still recording. Oh boy. And what is what is mandated? Is more than they. I mean, if we mandate it, then 